So we have another Just Stop Oil protest, or actually we have three separate examples um, for this segment that I'm about to do for you guys right now. Now what's interesting is, for I have a different opinion on each of the three. So we're going to get to them. We covered uh, this previously when they threw tomato soup on some other very expensive painting. Now thankfully, there was like a little protective thing in front of the painting, so the painting wasn't like ruined forever. Um... But now we have an updated version. So let's start with this one here. This is the one that's probably getting the most headlines. 19.2 million views on this video. Um, new mashed potato attack on $110 million Monet painting in Germany. So we have a quick video. Then I think they probably like super glue their hands or something to the wall. Let's take a look. Woo. Hello. Yeah, so I think that's what they did. People are starving, people are freezing, people are dying. We're in a climate catastrophe. And all of you are afraid of... And all you are afraid of is tomato soup or mashed potatoes on a painting? You know what I'm afraid of? I'm afraid because science tells us that we won't be able to feed our families in 2050. Does it take mashed potatoes on a painting to make you listen? The painting is not going to be worth anything if we have to fight over food. When will you finally start to listen? When will you finally start to listen and stop business as usual? Okay. So uh, that's the gist, gist of it here. So, mashed potatoes on a $110 million Monet painting. I don't know the deal with this specific painting. Is it possible they have also have a protective thing in front of it? Maybe. Uh, it, it probably likely. Actually, I mean, a $110 million painting, you think they have some precautions or whatever. Um, so, now, like, this is their thing, right? This is what they've been doing recently. Now, I talked about this previously. I'll just sum up my position, um, which is the exact same one as the previous video where they did the tomato soup on the painting. Um, I just, I don't get it. I don't get it. Because... If you're doing a protest, you want to either do something that's an end in and of itself, that helps people in and of itself, regardless of if you get public support, like it's just a good in and of itself, or you want to do a kind of protest that effectively raises awareness, gets everybody on your side, so that you're more likely to get some positive movement in the right direction. Those are the, those are the two kinds of protests that make sense to me. This doesn't make sense because it's, it's just, it's totally unrelated to... To anything. It's like, Monet didn't cause climate change. Monet didn't, Monet didn't do that. You know, Picasso or whoever the fuck else they ruined a painting. They didn't do that. Right? Now again, yeah, it's protected, whatever. But the only takeaway from this is not, hey, more people are taking climate change seriously, bro. The only takeaway from this is that it's like, every single normie in the world is like, huh. Well, that was fucked up. So it's, it's almost like geared towards making people hate them. They're sucking themselves off, off and acting like, we're every, you, finally, you're talking about climate change. No, they're not. Nobody's talking about climate change. They're talking about you and ruining paintings. That's what they're talking about. So it, it, you're just, you're wrong. Now, an argument I want to make, you know, to the left specifically is, is this. Don't be so dense that you make the argument that people who disagree on the strategy now all of a sudden, like, don't care about climate change, bro. Well, you care more about a painting than you care about climate change, bro? This is stuff that I've seen floating around Twitter. And that's just bullshit. That's not true. We can agree on, hey, we should stop climate change, and we need to find a way to be the most effective and get that done as quickly as possible. We can 100% agree on that, but then say, hey, I don't, I don't think the strategy gets us to that goal. I just, I disagree with the strategy. I think it's kind of silly. I see no logical connection between destroying, <laughs> trying to destroy a Monet painting and, and getting action on climate change. In fact, I think it might actually be counterproductive. So, now, look, you're f totally allowed to disagree with me and go, I think this is based, I think this is a good thing. That's totally fine. But don't fucking strawman people who don't agree that this helps get you towards your goal and help get us towards our goal. You know what I'm saying? So that's like, that's been the most annoying counter-argument I've seen, is like, people are like, I don't know about this strategy, man, it seems kind of fucked up, and people are like, I guess you don't even care about climate change, bro! I guess you don't even care about climate change, bro! ExxonMobil's proud of you, bro! 
That's just, I just find that so stupid. It's just so disingenuous. All right, anyway, so this is uh, one that I don't agree with. I don't like the way they did this. Now, let's go to the other end of the spectrum. Okay. So this is, again, more from Just Stop Oil. Breaking fossil fuel lobbyist headquarter, sp headquarters sprayed with paint. Here we go. So we have a little bit, just a short little 11-second um, video of this. Look at that. <laughs> they did pick a pretty ugly fucking color, too. <laughs> Look at this. Okay, now... Why do I kind of like this one? Because you're going after the people who are the problem. <laughs> like, that's why this is way better. Because you're going after fossil fuel headquarters. You know, climate skeptic lobbyist headquarters or whatever the fuck it is. These are the people who are directly responsible for causing climate change. So, you want to make their life a living hell by not doing anything violent to people, but like doing property damage to fuck with them and to make them have to waste time, money, resources, manpower on, you know, fixing this? Well, lovely, you know? And look, don't... Don't get it twisted. This might not be a thing that helps with public sentiment. Like, I don't know how the public would react to this, but it's still probably unpopular to do it, right? But this is one of those protests that you could argue is an end in and of itself. If you keep f fucking spray-painting the property of anybody and everybody who's, you know, an oil lobbyist or climate skeptic group or whatever, well, you might have people think twice about trying to get into that field of work if they're fucking colossal pariahs and they get fucked with on a regular basis. Again, totally non-violently, but they get fucked with on a regular basis. So this could be an end in and of itself. So this is a kind of protest I could, I could get behind. You know, I, can I think of better protests than this? Yeah, I could. I could think of things that are better than this, but this one I won't criticize because there's actually a logic to it. It actually makes sense. It's actually targeting the right people, right? So... Now, again, everybody should be able to digest nuanced disagreements, right? You can't look at the response to the painting one and be like, I don't even care about climate change, bro! You don't even care about That's just stupid. Well, here, now you have an example of one I look at, and I'm like, yeah, I, you know, I get it, right? Another example of a direct protest on climate change that um, would make sense is you go to the headquarters of, like, you know, a pipeline that's going to be laid somewhere, a new pipeline, and... Before the thing even gets put in the ground, you destroy the materials. Okay, that is an end in and of itself, because now you just delayed uh, a pipeline being created by another five months, six months, seven months, whatever it is. You know, going directly to Congress. Well, Jenk made this point the other day, and I thought it was a good point. Um, taking pictures of people who have died from climate disasters, right, including children, sending them directly to senators, congresspeople, and saying, this is your fault. You know, do something about climate change, or there's going to be more of this. Again, that's another one. It's another good one. You know, I, we could think of a hundred different things that would make sense, that are good. This one I file in the not bad category. You know, way better than the Monet shit, because uh, you're targeting the right people. Anyway, and so then here's one that I'm just, I just think is kind of funny. Um... So this is the Just Stop Oil activists have thrown custard pies into the face of King Charles waxwork at London Madame Tussauds. Okay, so let's... I haven't actually seen this video yet. Let me see. <laughs> uh -huh. uh, this is not the best public speaker. But anyway, this one I just... It's just funny. <laughs> like, I don't... Does this achieve anything? No. Um, does this get people on your side? No. But this one is just funny. <laughs> right? Just because it's, you know, going after a $110 million Monet painting, I think is a little categorically different than some shitty-ass wax sculpture that was made like seven minutes ago. Who cares about this fucking thing? So anyway, this, this one I just find funny. So you got three different protests, three different reactions. One I don't like. One I'm agnostic on slash find it funny. One I think is actually kind of good. Um, so, yeah. I just hope they stop doing the things that make people despise them, right? Don't do the ones that make people despise you if there's no tangible, real-world benefit in and of itself from the protest, you know? That's what I think the tomato soup ones on the paintings or thing on the, the mashed potatoes, potatoes on the um, Monet one. I don't like those ones. But 
if you target the climate skeptic lobbyist headquarters or, you know, oil company buildings or, you know, oil infrastructure before it goes in the ground or whatever, then totally different scenario that I could get on board with. Or everybody knows, the again, the other kind of protest, get a lot of people on your side that helps you move in the right direction. We learn from the civil rights movement. Uh, nonviolent, in fact, pacifist protesters who were basically got, got dogs sicked on them, got uh, fire hoses sprayed on them, but the violent reaction from the racist Alabama sheriffs made it so the entire country started to sympathize with the civil rights movement. And so that was an example of like, you're so principled and strategic that everybody sort of comes to your side. There's got to be a way you can craft, I don't know, million man march or some shit on Washington on this issue and they try to crack down on the protest, then you, you know, raise uh, awareness and people start agreeing with you. So that, that's another potential avenue. But um, I'll take the one of going after the climate skeptic headquarters. So anyway, there's your breakdown. Just stop oil protests continue and we'll see where they go from here. If you want to see me and Crystal Ball interview legends like Noam Chomsky, Cornell West, and more, subscribe to Crystal Kyle and Friends on Substack. $5 a month gets you the video version a day early. Remember, we take zero ad dollars for this podcast. Or you can sign up on Substack for free and get the audio version a day later. Link in the video description box below.